take the job. If I ain't gonna live to see the payday, might as well be you. I just want to say, we gotta take this job. This is the closest I ever been to starring in a serial drama. Only thing we're missing is a couple cameras and a soundtrack. Last year, Obsidian introduced us to The Outer Worlds, an RPG with mechanics familiar to Fallout fans, set amongst the stars. Now Paralon Gorgon adds a new chapter to the story, expanding on the mysteries and corporate dysfunction that define Halcyon. It doesn't make any drastic changes to the formula, but provides a sizable new tale to explore. Hawthorne, if you're getting this, something's happened to me. Peril on Gorgon takes place more than halfway through the main story of The Outer Worlds, and you can only access it after you finished the Monarch questline around level 25. So hopefully, you've hung on to your save file. Once you're far enough along, charting a new destination on your ship will prompt the delivery of a mysterious package containing the detached arm of one Lucky Montoya holding a recording device. The message it contains leads you to a rich heiress who wants you to retrieve her mother's journal from Project Gorgon's abandoned offices, so she can clear her family name. The man lost an arm. What are the odds of that happening twice? Of course, Gorgon is a treacherous place. Once you touch down on Gorgon's main surface, it's up to you to follow Lucky's trail and find out just what caused Spacer's choice to evacuate their cutting-edge research facility. Peril on Gorgon expands on the themes that underpin the Outer Worlds narrative and its toxic corporate culture, coming to a head in what's referenced as a cascade failure that reverberated down the chain of various departments with some truly horrific results. As you interview the few survivors and dig through company emails, you'll eventually start to uncover the answers to questions that you may have had since the beginning of the main game. My eye! I was wondering where I'd misplaced that old thing. As you might expect, most of your journey takes place on the surface of Gorgon, juxtaposing the green and purple hues of its outdoor environments with ruined apartment complexes and opulent office interiors. It comes in as one of the larger zones in the outer worlds, and there is some diversity in its facilities, including an overflowing trash dump and an old mine. However, since it's an asteroid, the constant nighttime vibes can feel a little dreary, and there aren't many coherent inhabitants outside of a small bar full of scavengers and folks trying to tie up loose ends. Give me a taste of the goods, just so I know I can trust you. You can't trust me. Now, did you bring the payment? I don't know. Did you bring the goods? Thankfully, the second half gets a bit more diverse, both in terms of locations and characters as you go off-world to track down some of the facility's former employees for more info. The mission takes you back to new areas in places like Byzantium and Groundbreaker, and as the pace of the main story picks up, filling in the rest of the puzzle pieces becomes more interesting. This unit has been programmed to provide a selection of marginally subversive repartee. Of course, there are some additional side quests to embark on as well. One is you recover a journalist's hidden recordings, while another has you search for a memento of a widow's lost husband. Plus, there are a few minor encounters, like settling a drunken argument at the bar. The Outer Worlds isn't afraid to be goofy from time to time either. A disoriented flight crew mutters about llamas, and if you bring Felix along as one of your companions, he'll treat the whole thing like he's in an adventure drama, narrating parts of your travels and making a poor attempt to hit on the woman who hires you. Hey boss, what's our policy on getting to know our clients a little better? You think she'd appreciate some company? Combat is largely unchanged, and has the same strengths and weaknesses as before. As long as you've invested in some good weapons and do your best to get the drop on an enemy, it's not too tough to manage, even on hard. Death is most likely to come when being overwhelmed by a group of marauders you weren't prepared for, rather than any large beasts or boss-type characters, which generally feel like pushovers. There are a few new weapons to play around with and mix things up in combat, but it's somewhat disappointing that Gorgon doesn't bring much new to the table in terms of enemy types. You're presented with amped up variations of existing beasts like toxic primals and frosty mantisars, but nothing that feels entirely new. As with the rest of the expansion though, as you get into the second half, things do improve, presenting you with stiffer challenges. There are also some good opportunities to bypass combat altogether by bribing guards or hacking into systems to shut down automated threats. For those of us who prefer to play the negotiator rather than the mercenary, the dialogue game is just as strong as before, complete with snarky comments and persuasion checks that can lead to some satisfying outcomes. Some of the quest lines engage you with choices that aren't a clear-cut matter of good versus evil, and it's great to feel like you need to struggle with those moments of indecision. This greeting constitutes your confidentiality agreement. You hereby agree not to disclose the location or existence of these events. Thank you for cooperating. 
In all, Peril on Gorgon lasts around 12 to 15 hours, depending on how much you want to read and scavenge, and there's more than enough here to warrant the $15 price tag. It's a solid journey, particularly if you want to reconnect to your crew and learn more about Halcyon. Digging through the ruins can get a bit lonesome after a while, but once you start meeting new characters and picking up the scent of where all this is going, it can hook you in through to the end. Llama. Want to shoot some dinosaurs? Brandon Jones and Bradley Ellis got to play Second Extinction ahead of Early Access. Be sure to check out their hands-on preview with fresh footage. All of our videos are made possible by generous viewers just like you. Contribute at patreon.com slash easyallies to help us make more. For just $1 a month, you can gain access to weekly updates, spoiler discussions, and exclusive shows.